This video will discuss Huckel theory for bonding in unsaturated hydrocarbons. So for most unsaturated hydrocarbons, like I have C2H4 ethylene here, we have an sp2 hybridized carbon bonding with another sp2 hybridized carbon and perhaps a long chain of those. But we have a planar uh, trigonal planar geometry around the central atom here, as we do around this central atom as well. So in the part of the system that we have pi bonds, we have this sort of uh, planar result where the overlap of the pz orbitals coming above and below our xy plane of all the atoms is kind of its own distinct uh, subsystem of the molecule. So our, our, we've got our pz orbitals. Those are perpendicular to all the other sp2 orbitals and 1s orbitals of the rest of the molecule. So these pz orbitals, our pi bonding system sort of forms its own unique subsystem of the molecule, as I mentioned. We've got two electrons here in C2H4, and we've got two orbitals in the P, two pz of each carbon atom. So we're going to look at how do these arrange to form a bonding and a bonding and antibonding orbital, and what are the energies of those two orbitals. Okay, so as I mentioned there, the pi bond is generally a weaker overlap than a sigma bond because it's side-on rather than head-on overlap. And we have a smaller energy difference, so pi bonds are typically weaker and uh, less of a deviation in energy away from the molecules not being bonded than, for example, sigma bonds would be. As I also mentioned, they are orthogonal to all of the other orbitals in the molecule. So our model here could be a linear combination that each pi molecular orbital is a linear combination of the pz orbitals from all the atoms that are participating in this pi system. So C1, 2pz1, plus C2, 2pz2. And we could use the linear variational method in order to get the energies of this pi system. So we have the Hamiltonian matrix H, the overlap matrix S, and the energy of the orbitals E. So H11 minus E, S11, etc. for every other element. The determinant of that in the linear variational method is going to be equal to zero in order for us to solve for our energies. So first assumption we're going to assume is that we have an orthonormal basis, that all of the overlap elements are either one if we're on the same atom like S11 or S22, and zero if they're on different atoms like S12, S21. Um, that's not technically going to be true for most of these uh, pz orbitals, but we're just going to assume that for the sake of Huckel theory. And um, we're going to get H12 is also equal to H21 there, but we, I don't think we have that yet. So we have H11 minus E, H12, H21, H22 minus E, the determinant of this is going to equal zero. So now Huckel theory is going to make some more assumptions and define specific values for each of these Hamiltonian matrix elements. So Hij, if, it, if I equals J, is going to be defined as a quantity called alpha. So alpha is the energy of kind of a pz orbital by itself. We have beta, if they are adjacent to one another. Beta is the coupling between adjacent pz orbitals in our molecule. And if they're non-adjacent, or if they're not uh, adjacent uh, pi orbitals next to one another, we're going to give it a zero. So for the case of ethene, C2H4, that gives us a determinant of alpha minus E, beta, beta, alpha minus E, determinant equals zero. So we have this diagonal, uh, alpha minus E quantity squared, minus the opposite diagonal, beta times beta, beta squared, is going to equal zero. If I expand this polynomial and then pull it out in terms of powers of E, I'm going to get 1 times E squared plus minus 2 alpha times E plus alpha squared minus beta squared equals 0. If I put that into the quadratic formula, you know, minus B plus or minus uh, square root of B squared minus 4AC over 2A, where this is A, this is B, and this is C, if I plug this into the quadratic formula, I will get that E equals alpha plus or minus beta. So these values alpha and beta in Huckel theory 
alpha is going to define the reference or kind of the zero in energy of our system. As I mentioned, alpha is just going to be whatever the energy of a PZ orbital uh, in non-interacting with other atoms is going to be. So it's kind of our zero starting point in energy. And then beta is the scale for the interaction, the scale for the coupling. So if beta gets bigger, the coupling is stronger. If beta gets smaller, the coupling is weaker. And empirically, the value of beta for these types of pi systems uh, gives the correct energies relative to other high accuracy calculations if you define beta to be about minus 75 kilojoules per mole. So if I bring these two PZ orbitals together and I form an overlapping pi system in ethylene, the orbital diagram I get is starting off at alpha for my PZ separate orbitals. They couple together through the value beta and I get alpha plus beta in my low energy bonding orbital, 75 kilojoules per mole below the reference. And I get a high energy antibonding orbital alpha minus beta. So this is the simplest case for two carbon atoms interacting with one another. But the key elements of Huckel theory here are that we have pi bonds, which form a system which is orthogonal to all other orbitals. We use it the linear variational method for the coefficients and energies of these orbitals. Solving the secular determinant from the linear variational method, uh, assuming our overlap to be ortho orthonormal and defining our Hamiltonian matrix elements in terms of alpha, beta, or zero to give our final energy diagram.